<laughs> you have to make this <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone for another episode of Monkey Business Show. And uh, it's a special one. We, yesterday we had a very nice premiere of um, Sebastian's major run. And with me I have Tom and Seb. Um, yeah, joining me to hopefully give some insight. Let's see what they can, let's see if they can actually speak. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think there's a lot of things that people want to know. Uh, like when it comes to all the backstage stuff and like how these things come together and how it all starts. So Tom, what do you, take me back from like the beginning. How did all this filming ever come to be? Um, Cause originally this was not even meant to be no. a standalone film. Um, yeah. It was meant to be another episode of, of our road to TI, honestly. And, uh, 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 and Jay, uh, the former CEO took a big punt. He was like, guys, Seb's subbing in for this tournament. I remember even saying to him like, this is going to be a waste of money. I remember saying that to him, like, they're, like, they're not going to do well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tom, okay. Oh, wow, it's cool for you to admit it. Honestly, I remember saying to him, like, I think there might be a waste of money. He's like, look, let's just do it. Let's see what happens. Um, so, so we flew the guys out to Stockholm and then obviously the event unfolded uh, as it did. Um, and then we sort of had to reverse engineer the film from that. We were like, when did you sorry, like when did you realize that maybe this could be more interesting than you thought it would be like in a sense well it was funny cause every win you had for the lower bracket i remember like looking to like jay or looking to, to some of the og stuff like oh like let's not let's not jinx it but this could be something okay um <clears throat> and then at the end we were like we were like okay this is bigger than just you know a, a 15 minute episode of uh of road to ti um but then yeah then we spoke with red bull obviously that they, they're your they're your guys uh and we worked out something of how we could bring this to life um so it kind of went the opposite way it's not like we were embedded with you from the beginning at your home and things like that we had to sort of reverse and mm -hmm. the uh the film um that is kind of how it came to light uh the whole the whole tournament run itself i mean for us it was incredible i mean for for my crew it was the first esports event they've ever been to really yeah Oh, for like Jacob and stuff like that. The, 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 the cinematographer, he'd never been to an esports event before, and he was like, oh my God, like, and he, he's that one where they won. I remember the Fnatic game three and he was like, holy shit, this is, stadium's booting off. Um, so that was lovely, lovely for them to see. And uh, I think, yeah, it was a real joy for us to watch the whole journey and everything. Um, but yeah, that, that's how it came about. That's how it came about. Luckily you got the win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Seb? I'm curious, like, when did you start feeling like Okay, you know, OG magic is, is is happening, and like, I mean, the I wouldn't say things are aligning because it's like it's again you're making it align and and the hard work. When did you feel that you started becoming good enough as a team that uh, this tournament was, I mean, not just within reach but yours? Like, when when do you feel like it kind of happened for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I, I try to think back on that, and I think it must have been. Um, I was pretty doubtful, honestly. Like I was just, uh, I mean, I said it in in the film, but I was I was really focusing on, like, you know, trying our best and making sure we get out of the group stage one one game at a time. Like I really, I had, I didn't really have a lot of faith that this team could win the tournament. Like, expectations were never like no, they were not high as it started. It's like let's take it really one step at a time and let's see where we go. And and honestly, when the team entered the tournament, we were not ready to win it. Like, you know, not even close. Uh, I think it was so after the Fnatic game three, I, I was pretty upset. I mean, you know, we had a talk, and then even though so the, the boys were like super excited and hyped because they just won, and obviously it was a thrilling series. And it was the first time versus the crowd was the Fnatic game, right? Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like this, like, and 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 the gameplay was so sloppy, chat <laughs> three, right? It was like terrible. It was like I remember telling Johan, I think this is one of the worst Dota game I've ever been part of. Oh, like, I was telling Alan the same thing in the back. <laughs> it's like it's really bad. Like but this is as bad as it gets for me. You know, this brings me back like ten years ago. Like that was. I'm really happy we pulled through, but we also didn't pull through in a heroic way. I mean, I know gameplay was, it looks like that, but it's like we were like fighting our own kind of demons, you know, like fighting the, the nerves and the stress. And, and it felt like we really never got our head out of, out of the water throughout the series, right? And Fnatic must have been worse than us in a way, because they, they know. Yes. <laughs> but we were not winners, you know? And that was, so anyway, so then we had this speech when we go back to the hotel where I was like, it's kind of hit or miss because yes. the guys could react badly to that too, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like the party pooper where instead of like celebrating, I, I bring the team a little bit down and, and have them kind of realize that we need to shape up and stuff. Anyways, so anyway, we had we have that talk, right? Uh, and then 
everybody goes to bed. It was quite late because we played late, so it was already mm-hmm. like 11 p.m. or something. We yeah. play in the morning, so it's like we don't have time to deep. It's like we have the talk, and everybody goes their separate ways. Then we meet up in the morning, and I was really anxious to how they would react. You know, give me the, you know, not a smile, a quick hi or something. You know, as in like I had a bad night and it's mostly <laughs> on you and stuff like that. But people were in good vibes, good energy. You know, I could feel like the momentum starting to build up. And then we play our first series for the next day and we play so well. Like everybody's feeling free. Mm. Everybody's having fun, uh, bantering, you know. And then I'm like, okay. At that point, I'm like, okay, this team can actually do the run. I, I see it. You know, I see the, I feel the, I feel the energy. I feel the fire. So that's when I, it switched for me, like yeah. the next day. No, I mean, I would, from my perspective, it was the same thing. Like if, if you would have played the same as you did in the Fnatic series, probably wouldn't have beat the remaining teams but yeah i had the same feeling going to bed that night it's like this is gonna work or this is really not gonna work um but i started feeling because it almost looks like a movie i've seen before uh and here i could see i mean not that i could kind of predict the ending but at the same time i felt like it was coming after the Fnatic game it's it's kind of cool that you can really see people opening up and growing and stuff did you did you feel the same tom like did you see a shift uh <coughs> yeah Big time. Um, for us, I think uh, the Dota stuff aside, I, I, I kind of feel like the kids need to go on the kids. The the, the, the young teams you had, they, they need to go on this big challenge. And that, that was that game. It was them not breaking on a stage. And if you think about it, like that game, there was a lot about that game. Like it was their first game on main stage, or yeah. first series on main stage, first elimination game. Like, because, you know, I got to game three, like, elimination map uh, in front of an audience. Yeah. First major, so first time that they could get eliminated. In a first time crowd for most first of them. crowd. Just do or die. Like, this is as hard as it gets. Yeah. It's like, this is the test of, like, how can you handle pressure, really? That's yeah. what it was, right? So, of course, it was, it was to be expected that this was going to happen. And obviously, I felt bad kind of, uh, you know, like, um, what's it called, like, not lecturing them, kind of, but having that talk, I felt bad because I knew what it looked for me, right? <laughs> and it looked way worse than that. But I want to push them, right? Like, we want to push them. We want to, like, so, but, you know, that was so obviously the thing about it. It's like, it's kind of crazy that it only took them one game and, you know, one one talk and one night to kind of gather their thoughts and, you know, get ready for the next day and get ready in that spirit. So, pretty crazy. Yeah, I, 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 saw, I didn't see any adversity afterwards. Maybe you after you lost the first game against TSM in the finals, and then it was a bit of a repeat. Like, okay, but we've been here before. But the rest was like, okay, now we're having fun, cruising. Yeah, cruising through that lower bracket. Um, and for us, it was so funny because we would obviously we would be shooting on uh, at the arena, and then we'd have to come back to the backstage room where all the stuff would happen. And some of the games were so fast, we were like, guys, quickly back, <laughs> everyone back. Um, yeah. I, I think, do you realize how important that that moment probably was for those, for, for the team? You mean like the, the switch, right? The, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, That's a huge life lesson, I think. It is, it is. For, for someone and like they that. keep going back to it now, even today. I mean, I remember at TI and stuff, they threaten each other. It's like, do you want this to be like fanatic? You know, like as in like, yeah. yo, watch out. You know, like uh, you're not going, you're going in the wrong direction with this, my friend. Like you're going to end up with the, fan, like playing like in the, in the fanatic game. They all kind of meme me with each other because we like, you know, we're kind of flame, and I was trying to make fun of it. I, I try to make them feel bad about it in a way, as in, like, you're much better than that. You know, this is, like, so below your standards. Like, look at... And I was trying to snap them out of this, like, you know, telling, repeating them some of the lines that they were saying, you know. So, for instance, um, I remember, like, we're at a point at the, at the game, like, later in the game, where, like, I don't know, Tide has, ref- like, refresher and refresher. We have three ravages. We have three black holes. They can't yep. cancel any of I was them. watching. The morph is like six started with satanic Aegis. Yes. And all we talk about is like, I remember like one of them saying, hey, I'm going to buy Wind Waker, which is like a saving oh item. Okay. So that the, indeed, like if we actually all go AFK, literally we're all having a stroke, right? We cannot press a button and they throw all their spells on this one hero. They might even, maybe they might kill it. You know, it's possible. And then we're thinking about that scenario and he's like, I'm going to buy this item so I can save you. I'm like, what about you press your button, any button? You could put and your hand on the keyboard and do this and you start winning. Then we get yeah. the five of them. You know, why are yeah. you thinking about what they're going to do to us and how we're going to try to counter it? Like, why? But you know, this is what happens in your brain kind of when you're yeah, you're so nervous that all you can think about is what could go wrong, right? Anyways, we have this meme of like, we keep going back to that game. 
with items and it's like you remember you saying and then they're like oh my god you know they realize after yeah why was i talking about that like i'm so i'm so uh, stupid it was really funny listening uh to some of the i mean the inside jokes that they were they were throwing around like one of them was hey guys guys we have to do something yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> we have to do something i'm <laughs> doing nothing i mean obviously i'm gonna get you anywhere and that happens in the film that's also why we <laughs> laugh i think before, <laughs> no, before one of the series i tell them don't forget we have to do something you know yeah and because at some point we realize we need to just stop saying that guys like what does it even mean like you can't just like <laughs> it's like you're on the football field like, guys we have to score yeah. yeah duh okay what do we do like do you want me to just like run in a straight <laughs> out towards the goalkeeper or like can we just play the game and obviously <laughs> we have to do something you know but it's this kind of overcompensation that happens in Dota at times where it's like you end up telling each other stuff and you just, this is how you also break the network flow of the game, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not really like you didn't really put thought it behind it. No. Um, yeah. Yes, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta come back. Yeah, okay, thanks. You yeah. said something in your AMA the other day, which was, it was interesting to me and I, I understood it, but you, the way you put it was really good. You were like, uh, the longer a game of Dota goes, the more it becomes 50 50. Yeah, for sure. Actually, that's a quote from Dendy. Like, it's Dendy, was oh, it? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right from a long, long time ago, like maybe 10 years ago. And yeah, I think he's quite right about it, right? Like that, how how would you break it down? Like, I mean, of course, there's like, there are scenarios where it's not the case, but the way the game works is you get a certain amount of gold and you tend to get the ability to kill anyone on the map. And for that reason, it's like, it becomes this thing of like, who gets the first jump and who gets the spells, like really, really late game when both teams have items. So when you're... um I guess it's kind of like a boxing fight when you're like all the way fatigued, both of you. It's like one hit can just end the match, right? Yeah. Um, and I think Dota has this element too in, in most of the games. So yeah, you want to be in control and you, you take your advantages and push them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tom, I wanted to uh, ask you as well. I'm curious, like how much went into all of this? Like how much did you travel? How much did you get around? Like uh, How much did yeah. you travel? Uh, I traveled a lot. Um I think actually the first piece of the puzzle once we once we had the Stockholm stuff wrapped up and then Red Bull agreed to, to green light that for production, the first thing we did was went and visited uh, Shiva and Owen. Yeah. In uh in Holland. Um in their lovely apartment together and it was lovely. And <clears throat> for me it was like I needed a voice of contact throughout the tournament. They were great, by the way, and perfect. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. They're perfect. They were uh, Owen's just incredible speaker and the Shiva as well. They brought great context. They have a way to sort of break things down, like to make it like re really. I, I was worried about. I, ha I had friends watching all, all sort of the film like yesterday at the premiere, and I was worried like, are they really gonna understand? You know, the circuit, like this kind of stuff, like the yeah. tournament, the brackets. But the way sh like Shiva and Owen, like they they break things down, it's really nice. It's very accessible for everybody. Yeah, exactly that, and 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 that's exactly what we needed them to do. Really, we were, we provided them the questions and the we went for every game of everything and. The, and uh, and they broke it down and everything and and that for us was like oh, okay right we can tell the story now and then i think the next thing was well i guess we we visited you yeah yeah i think so you and your, uh you fanny your partner um is that where the shower shot came in the shower shot <laughs> i don't want to say no i think no but i can't say no to this guys like i was like did you shower for this take or was it like a big shot okay yeah, I, see. I had to do it four times <laughs> like uh, they're like come on just just, just walk off drop the towel drop the shower <laughs> he said like do you want me to take my shower i was like well, what you shower your clothes on <laughs> I was like, put the towel out. <laughs> and then they uh, like, just, you know, sit down, like, do what you do on a daily stuff. Like, you know, open like a magazine and read it. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. That's, 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 that's that is what I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, we did that. So we, we shot with you. Um, then we had all of the cinema stuff, uh, which was, I mean, wonderful. We, we shot at a lovely little boutique cinema, Le Brady, out to them in, uh, in Paris and I knew I kind of wanted to bring you back home every now and again in the film. Right, because what, what's lovely with you, sorry, is people don't realize is, you know, it's one game, is an hour and a half long. We've got to tell the whole tournament. And I was like, yeah. we're going to have to break this up somehow. It's going to be too boring just to go from game It's really hard game to find the game. Right balance also. Like, it's, yeah. It's, it's, what should be a re it must be a really, really tough job. Yeah. So it, for us, it was, we kind of knew, let's focus on the Fnatic game. That, for sure, we know is a huge pivotal moment for the team. The rest is kind of a montage of you just fucking going on your groove and uh, and rocking and rolling, which, which which we knew we wanted to do, and then, and then the TSM game as well. Um, what we didn't realize is we we didn't realize how much good stuff we have from the group stage. There is so much banter between you and the guys that, that we were like picking. What's the best? Easy. There's a lot of Dota specific stuff that we found was just too over even like my head. I got it after listening to it about fifty times. What you actually guys are arguing about. But uh, 
I mean, there's a whole bit of you have it like going to like BZM, which we didn't include in the, in the back. You were, just, you were trying to teach him how to just keep your body alive throughout a tournament. I mean, a, a lot of that, it's like, it brought me back like, cause they're, they were so young. I mean, they're still young, but like the sleeping schedule, the eating yeah. schedule, the yeah. drinking schedule. And I'm like, you you just can't do that you know like this is not gonna <laughs> yeah. work my friend like uh but i i could tell that they were a little bit skeptical right and honestly like thinking about that i'm kind of happy like i was also i I was a little bit pressured when the tournament started because i kind of felt that okay i got to play well so that they will they listen more i feel like the better yeah of I course played, it's gonna have a different board, ring to it yeah <laughs> Because if I'm like, I'm rusty and I'm just getting outplayed. and You start getting, telling them how to play. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting <laughs> yeah. styled on by the opposition. And I'm like, bro, you shouldn't be eight at that point. They're like, like, what do you know? Like, as in, you can't cast a single spell and you're telling me what I should be doing. Just let me do it. But I think since they, I, I earned their respect kind of in game, then they were like, okay, maybe I should listen to him, you know? So so that was cool. When when did that Wind Ranger come in? For you, I don't even remember, honestly. I don't even, I think... Um, this is one of your go-to supports in pubs, I think. Yeah, yeah. I used point. to play it in pubs. I, like, yeah. I enjoyed the hero and I felt like the shard was really nice. And then I'm like, maybe this is a nice opportunity. You know, it's not going to yeah. take too much effort. It's like I already kind of know what I want to do with it. And it was a drafting thing, I yeah. remember too. Like it helped the rest of the guys kind of get way like more comfortable set up. Yeah. Uh, it was really good with the Amar heroes also. Like, yeah. um, it, it, I could lane with them. So, or laning with Amar, that was something, man. That was something. <laughs> I'm usually, so Johan would know, like, I'm usually to a much lesser degree, but I'm more, I'm usually DMR in the lane. I said, like, I'm very clear on what I want to see happen in the lane, and I'm trying to be vocal about it, and and often I do it correct, and sometimes I overdo it, you know, like, that's why he's giving me the look. It has happened in OG where, yes, he would tell me, okay, Ch- Seb, you, you got to chill a bit, like, uh, I understand what you want, but. Yes, yes, the Seb relationship was really fun. It was fun. We, yeah. had, we had a really good one, but uh, don't get me wrong, but it's like, we had to balance it out, you know. But I'm 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 very vocal in the lane, anyways. Uh, so I'm used to that, right? And I see a lot of Amar in you, by the way. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I do. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 used to that, right? But then I started laning with Amar, so I'm like, well, I can't do that, you know. Like this is no, this is another day under another day in the office office for me. <laughs> Dude, it's a look half an hour in way. <laughs> half an hour, and I'm shaking, man. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you know, so much pressure and stuff. I'm like. He's like, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I mean, he's right about what he says, right? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, but I'm like, whoa, I'm sorry to sweat. I'm like, you know, and I'm just getting accumulated. Um, you know, I'm getting used to this again, like this setup and stuff. I, it was it was funny. It was nice experience. You know, it had me had me reflect on a lot of things too, in a way. Yeah. Uh, but it's funny how these things, I think, push a lot of the team to, yeah, I mean, all these small things that we're talking about, like how you speak to each other and, and also the food thing. I mean, when you mentioned this, it brings me back to like old OG. We're overall pretty like healthy with choices. I think Anna cared less about what he ate, for example. Sometimes more often we'll go for junk. But when it really came down to it, like some days when people really wanted to win, you just heard people asking for like, you know, the salmon ball or like some mm. early fruit ball, you know, before the games. And I think that's when your your mind is like truly in the right place, you know, uh, because you're taking every small step towards your own performance kind of thing and then towards like better betterness so yeah i i saw a bit of this i think this you can always learn right even me as in like do routines and whatever or you like I, th- I guess we can always learn but i think the growth that you you saw in in all of you uh is very clear as in you, you could see it on the film too i had a quick question actually for you tom because uh, mm. i also realized that when of course like getting to know you guys and your team and 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 how these you know, films are made at the end of the day, right? Uh, I think most people wouldn't wouldn't really guess, like how long of you know filming or it- interviewing or footage does it require in order to just have whatever I don't know, fifteen minutes or twenty minutes of somebody like, film like that. Yeah, but how long? I, I think people wouldn't really. Honestly, there's so many full scenes that didn't make it in this because we were like, it ruins the flow. It is too much. You were mentioning about food and stuff like that. There's a whole bit about you talking about how you knew that OG clicked at a tournament, you're the old OG, your old previous team, when when people were coming forward about how much healthy stuff they wanted to eat that day. Yeah. And they were talking about it and pushing it like, yeah, we're going to get the salad this morning, whatever. And it was like you knew the team was synergizing because they, they wanted to be peak performance for the event. Yeah. It also shows something to the other guys. Yeah, exactly that. Um so, yeah, back to your question. This, like, honestly, we did what well, we did an hour interview with you, hour interview with Johan. 
out of all the other guys. Um, I mean, we shot maybe in total 20 days. Yeah, so, you see, I mean, I think that's astonishing. Like 20 days of, 20 of, days. of shooting for like an hour and a half. It's yeah. crazy. I think it's hard to kind of, um, yeah, <laughs> it's really hard to guess that it's so much. <clears throat> yeah. And then I guess you just really have to figure out your story. I mean, there's better ways of doing it for sure. But I mean, for us, it was, you know, it's a documentary. You don't really know what you're going to get. So, uh, yeah, that, that kind of is the process. You've got to, you've got to just shoot loads and loads and loads and then <laughs> chop it all back. I mean, I've heard your voice now for about... Yeah, it must be so full. <laughs> like, it must be so four months total. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, a lot... I mean, it's great. I mean, it's, it's especially for us, uh, you kind of need all the human stuff. So, I mean, I remember when we were interviewing you, I was like, the first half hour of questions had nothing to do about Dota. And it was like, who are you as a person? You really caught me off guard with that one, by the way. Like, I don't know if you realized, but you started that interview with like asking me, who are you? And I was like, yeah. I was, I couldn't, not a single word could come off my mouth. I was like, that, like I did not know what to answer whatsoever but you really yeah threw me off with that one I did not expect it everyone's interview started like that by the way okay who is Seb and then, and then you finally got to you I was like who are you <laughs> and you were like whoa yeah I, I had no I, I, mean, I still wouldn't know how to answer it, but uh, yeah. it was a good one you really got me there well it works uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, no I, I think for us that we wanted to show really the, the heart of the competitor really was, was the, the goal of the piece Yes, we follow a tournament run and it's embedded throughout the thing. You guys have competed for so long and I feel like you have so much value in terms of what you've learned and it's kind of hard to like break that down. Uh, so that's kind of what was my main goal of the whole film. Like, I think it's what inspires people also at the end of the day, right? Like the, the, um, like the philosophy also in which you compete. Like just more than the, the runs or the games themselves, right? Yeah, I mean, I think what I saw in this film was people that really play for the game, as in, I mean, they play for something. Uh, and I think it's more than just, I don't know, simple gains or, or making a name. I think people are playing for for something greater. And I think this, yeah, is very inspiring to, to see the passion that it requires. Um, I mean, maybe you need to have a more, what's it called, like a broader goal or like something that's more sacred. Um, to actually get to where you guys were getting at, like how much you're, you're, I mean, it's, of course you can look at it one way, wake up and play Dota and live that life. And yeah, you should be happy and thankful and whatever, but it, people don't understand also like every day you're sacrificing all this and you come in and you have to deal with all your inner turmoil. And I think the inspiration is like, yeah, people figuring this shit out, like actually dealing with their problems, dealing with all these bad things and, and yeah, like, doing all the small things like which which food are you eating how are you talking to me are you gonna you know uh, recognize how, what i'm going through and so on um at least to me i think that's the only thing that also kept me going for this long is like the team i wonder if dota would have been a solo game i think i think yeah. it would have been much shorter lived honestly i think yeah i think you, you should, i just I, i'm just thinking about it yeah i could not have made it either yeah like, as a solo adventure like all the way yeah. impossible yeah, because surely, I mean, people get mad and frustrated and, and they take it out on each other. But at the same time, like having those people around you that when you're down, they're actually picking you up and vice versa. You suddenly realize like, oh my God, I can do so much more than I even thought myself I could do, you know, in my wildest dreams. Um, yeah, uh, I think I think for me, uh, it's, from a film perspective, people connect with people. Mm -hmm. They don't give a shit about the game. Yeah, like they, they, they could, for sure. It could be tennis. It could be Formula One. It could be whatever. People love people, and, that, and that's what they care about. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and you're lucky in the sense that you you guys compete in such a visually rich uh, product. Mm. You know, all the animation, it just looks great. So uh, I, I think that that is kind of something that runs through through all the film work. The quality of the animation, like animated pieces, I need to do was a shout out. Amazing. I need to do a shout yeah. out. So the Dota community really came together for this. Mm. Uh, Anatoly, Igor. Uh, um, everybody that helped uh, with the animations dude your game is so broken that we had to manually track all of the names of all of the teams above the heads mm -hmm. of each of the characters for all of the top down stuff yeah, well, you yeah, can't, yeah because you get you, can't, wrong, you yeah. can't record your the, the way Dota works is that it's it 
will show you replays, but with your current name. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. So you'd be OG, yeah. Amar would be Nigma. Yeah. All the teams have different teams now. Like all the players are on different yeah. rosters. So we were like, oh my God, we can't have this. We can't show the game and then the wrong teams there. So we're like, well, we can have it blank. Honestly, there are, back. there are moments in True Sites where yeah. the wrong names are. I, I was going to say, I think I've seen guys. I know, I know exactly the process because I've put yeah. it deep. Yeah. But you did better than Val then. Free, <laughs> free to point. play, free to play did exactly the same as what we did. Okay. It's all done in post-production, I can see. Uh -huh. True Sight, they've given up. Uh -huh. I mean, there's <laughs> no, 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 they gave up and they now just record the stream yeah, in like a decent enough quality okay. yeah. for it to like look good in the film. We were like, we're not going to record this. We're not going to have the stream in the film. Uh, we didn't have the option for that either. Anyway, it was a huge post-production job uh, and uh, the animators and the in-game guys are, are all from the community. Mm. Uh, we, we went and looked at who won last year's short film competition okay, yeah. at, uh, at um, TI. Yeah. And we're like, this guy's looks amazing. So we reached out to him and he was like, yeah, 100%. Like, oh, awesome. Send me the scenes and, and the, the result is amazing. I, honestly, yeah. the result's such a cool. So good. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. Like yeah. a snap fire dying at the end. And, and the buck too. Like, yeah, 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 the buck or strong injury. Yeah, it's truly amazing. So props yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah, did a really good job. Shout out to us, really. Yeah. yeah. I had another question because this was the first major. You have so many questions. Actually, just two more. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I think that's also part of that. <laughs> uh, no, but that's the way I remember it. I do my hair. You can ask. Oh, well, actually, this one. We had a great picture yesterday. Your hair has a life of its own. This is beginning. I'll, I'll put this uh, question away for now because I want to ask stop, 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 who stop. does your styling? Who does your hair? How does it come together? Come on. We, we tell the world now that it's you. <laughs> it's been me all along. <laughs> I've been dressing up Seb every day. <laughs> uh, on to your question. Um, well, that was a serious question. No, nice. Because it's been, uh, I'm trying to remember like the timeline because we hadn't had a crowd for almost two years. I want to yeah. say, I guess, all right. I mean, yeah. TI had no crowd. Yeah. Uh, because of the cancel, like cancellation last time. Yeah. Last minute. And, uh, and then you had Romania that had no crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was COVID. So this was like the first big like, event for the two years. I, I want to so, say. Yeah. Yeah, Something yeah. like this. Something around that. And uh, yeah, it was also, I think the first tournament with a crowd in Europe in a very long time too. Uh, so it was like full arena and stuff. Like how did it feel having this compared to, you know, the COVID online experience and all this? Like, it, did you feel the crowd? Was it yeah. a good experience? Uh, was the major done well, would you say? Yeah, the major, the major was amazing. Yeah. It was really amazing. Like the, the atmosphere, the crowd was wild. It was, it was crazy good and obviously it added up, like the fact that we didn't have a crowd for so long also added up to it, yeah. of course. Um, no, the experience was great. Uh, I think it really brought me back to, yeah, the, the the core of like what's what's so, you know, thrilling when you go to these tournaments. It's mm -hmm. like, it's just like, yeah, like this moment where everybody shares and the energy is like through the roof and you can feel it and it's contagious and, 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 and you thrive from it, honestly. Like I think the reason why also you're, a team is able to, to to push themselves that much is also because of what's happening and I, and honestly that was also the first tournament the first tournament for me where i felt so much support from the crowd like as og yeah yeah because there was a lot of support really behind us like yeah, yeah they were yeah. pushing so much and and there was a moment there's a moment i forget when you beat thunder awaken and the guy comes out afterwards and he goes there was so many og chants that even i wanted a chant for og yeah. and it's done yeah. like where i come from like when I started Dota like, competitively, we would, so back then the big team was Navi. Navi were like the, the legends, you know, they, they, they were undefeated. I'm getting goosebumps like, thinking about it now. Yeah, they were yeah. like superstars. And there were so many tournaments in Kiev, like uh, where it was their home. Then we had to go there and play against them on stage in front of Ukrainian fans. And, and it was so hard. Like all we could hear was Navi chanting. And every time the crowd was against us, you know, and they were so supportive of them. And it was so hard. And... And then we have to pull through that. So we learned that lesson, right? And I mean, TI8, um, nobody really expected us. There was a lot of Chinese fans in the audience because Vancouver, like, uh, um, pre pre pretty close. And um, and the, the crowd was against us also. You know, TI9 in Shanghai, obviously the crowd was against us. We were like the villain that, that kind of came to China to steal the Aegis from China, the, yeah. the Chinese team once again. Most of the tournaments we I went to anyways as a player, the crowd was never really with my team. Like, yeah. you had different experiences I mean, in majors, but I was coaching back then, so I didn't feel that yeah. as much, you know? But like, so this was the first tournament where the crowd was on my side. And I was like, well, this is 
great. Like this is really <laughs> cool. Like the feeling is amazing. You know, they're just like they're lifting you up. So that that was that's that wild. It does give you something for sure when the crowd is on your side and and not against you. It, I I think it gives you. But I I want to yeah add to the atmosphere stuff. I really felt you can really feel the atmosphere at tournaments that are also executed proper. Because yeah. in some tournaments there's like all these doubts and things that started arising. But like trying to remember back, there was like it was very smooth, no issues. I think everybody was really scared because of uh, you know COVID like uh, took it away from us and like you kind of robbed it. But here the tension, even from the group stage and like in the practice rooms, like I felt it. I think everybody was feeling it. So yeah, I guess shout out to to ESL as well for pulling, yeah, pulling yeah. off a, a good uh, like making it smooth. Yeah, it was amazing. It was yeah. an amazing tournament for sure. Yeah, it was long as well. I was surprised how long it was. I made it always like that. I mean, yeah. in total, you're looking at 11 days. Yeah. Some are shorter for sure, but... Uh, I think it's done right. It's about this because you yeah. want like a group stage of a couple of days, take a break and then playoffs needs to take, you know, a certain amount of days. So, yeah, yeah, all depending on how much crowd uh, days you're also planning to have. But, you know, some tournaments had, had, have even more of the playoffs being played on main stage. I think here they had the first round. Of you played tournament. TSM, yeah, in the same group stage environment. Yeah. 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 The, the first round of lower bracket, I think, wasn't mm. still in the group stage area. How was it for you, Tom and, and and Jacob, who was like for the first time, like, and how did you see this this event? Uh, no, I, I, I've been to a lot. I've been to a lot of CS events. Yeah, yeah. Yes, film. They go crazy there too. <laughs> they go crazy, but I feel like you've got a much more sophisticated audience. CS, <laughs> CS is a bit more like you know, pine glasses in the air, and like, like you know, they're a bit more rowdy and like like a UFC event almost. Uh huh. Um, but you guys, you know, it's like quietly calm. It's quite a cerebral atmosphere, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can call it nerdy, whatever, but you know, the, the, the fans are definitely more controlled and less, um, but no, I think they were loved and I, you don't quite see the same sort of people had tattoos of OG on the back of their heads. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think they really, especially your brands everywhere, everywhere there and, and they love it. No, we loved the event. We thought, it was, we thought it was electric, honestly, all the way to the end. Um, and yeah, again, props to ESL. It was so smooth for us to do what we needed to do. Um, all the access and everything. Um, yeah. I know there was no there's no issues whatsoever. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was amazing. I hope for more more of these things to to succeed, and especially in Europe. I think Europe is also very ready for Dota uh, events. I mean, we have so much Dota going on here. Yeah. Um, Seb, I had a question for you. Why why is Saxa Flame? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably good mentioning that. I I actually wrote him before the before the well, you knew premiere. before the premiere. Yeah, or Saxa. I'm sorry. I I wrote him. I'm like, hey, bro. Like, uh, I mean every word. <laughs> I'm like, don't don't take this the wrong way, you know, stuff like that. As in, I mean, he knows how much I respect him, right? And yeah. and how much I respect his team. Um, and I mean, I'm I'm happy. I mean, it was also in the documentary. I think there is a moment where I do say like, oh, Tundra is really play. strong. And but even before that, you know, I, I mentioned that Tundra is really really strong. And you know, I kept thinking about them throughout the tournament because I look at them as being the best team and my favorites to win it. So I always look up to the best team in a tournament because there's a lot to learn from them, right? Mm. So obviously. It is very well broken down in in the film, like how it's important to kind of put down somebody when they're they're too high and and stuff. And I mean, for Saxa specifically, uh, the thing is, I I have to be credible. Like I I can't tell the teammates that skitters like this and it's like that. I don't know him, but I've played with Saxa, so I can tell them how he is. Kind of even though obviously he's not <laughs> like yeah. that so much. Yeah. But I mean, maybe you know, there's like an angle that I can use in order to kind of show them that hey, he's. He's vulnerable, you know. He's just like yeah. He's also feeling stressed and stuff. Don't don't freak out. And since I know him, I know that they're gonna trust me on that. Yeah. You know, they're not gonna second guess what I'm telling them. So that's why I went for this angle uh, and kind of talking down Saxa in particular, because I knew that they would they would buy it. It's credible. Yeah. But yeah. I think so much goes into this. It's like the mental game, right? Like I, I go back to TI8 uh, mostly, and I think of the way we used to communicate before some of these games. Also depends on character. I mean, me and Seb could have a conversation about a team. I think it could be at a much different tone where we respect and acknowledge, like, oh, this player's amazing. Yeah, I, you know, it's incredible what he's doing. We need to learn from this. But if I told, for example, Anna, or if I talk to Anna like this, he's actually going to play a lot worse against somebody. That's the feeling I got. But the way we used to talk about teams in, in that OG, for example, when we go into these important games, there's, there's a lot of, like, down-talking some of them or making them lesser in one way or another. Maybe not discrediting their play, but anything you can, like you grab, you know, it's like, this guy is mine, you know, I'm gonna, this is all, oh, this is bad, like I'm gonna take this. And and that mental game, I think is super important because if you start, it, again, it depends on character and stuff, but here we have also young players, but if you start putting other people 
in a place of respect. Uh, you might play with fear. You might play with like hesitation. So, I think especially was, especially Tundra that tournament. Yes, Tundra. About it, they were they crushed the group stage. Yeah, they also crushed us in the group stage. Yeah. Too. They were dominating. And you played super scared in yeah. the game against Tundra. Yeah. Super scared. Exactly. So it's like, we really had to break that. Break yeah. that kind of dynamic. Else, uh, we had no chance. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, this it's a fine line to the, to walk. And I, I have, I mean, I, I walked this with Seb so many times. Even when we managed to take down Tundra before the, for the TI-10 qualifier, it was the same thing. Like, we had to, we put so much respect on them uh, and their strategies that were like, we actually are not ready to play into this with, something that we have like we actually have to completely change what we have and more or less take their style and apply it to them as well um but then you know again the way we're doing it we're walking this fine line is like yeah you're good you're really good you have something good ah, i can do it better like screw you you know so yeah yeah i again for people that that look at these documentaries and think it's like rude offensive or personal i mean bro we've been traveling for like how many years i don't even know who i'm traveling at anymore it's not for them it's for you yeah for you 100 percent. it's it's important and i and i know that they also understand they yeah. probably do the same i yeah. mean there's gonna be a true side about their ti win so we'll see but yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah but actually what <laughs> what i felt really dumb was like when i saw the first version of the film mm. that that tom sent me then i saw these moments and i'm like gosh but they also want ti <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get so much flag for this, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pull out my clown, uh, the clown, the clown, the clown thing. <laughs> so because Tundra, and it's always Tundra for some reason. They're like my 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 black sheep or something. Because so they made a change, right? They had uh, their captain was called Farah. Yeah. And I look up to this guy a lot. And they changed him. They kicked him from the team, and they got tax instead. And I tweeted something like, "This is gonna be remembered as the worst, worst kick in history." Kick in history. <laughs> right. Okay. Then. They, Went on and won TI. <laughs> so, so at TI when we were doing the podcast, actually, I was like, I took it upon myself to have this uh, clown head where I'm like, you know, I just hold it for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I deserve. So now with this, I probably need to pull it off again. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm like, they're, they're mega chokers. You know, they went TI. So, yeah. No, I think I think we've done it in a way that's quite tasteful. It doesn't look rude. We well, sort of explained ourselves that, you know, this is the thing you need to do and whatever that, uh, to get the team going. And... And that's competition, guy. Yeah. I thought it was competition, right? I can only imagine this happens in every sport when yeah. it's a competition like this. Yeah. yeah, and I like the idea of just like being true to what actually happens in a backstage role. Like, you know, like in between games, sure. like this is what we tell each other. This is how we behave. Have it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you know, if it's all sunshine and rainbows, then yeah, no, and it, and it, it isn't. It isn't. Of course, there are the whole panel of emotion is there and yeah. the way to prepare. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I mean, I've only. One last question is really not that great. So I'm wondering, does somebody here in the room potentially have? I have actually have one. If you have something good, yeah. then let's hear it. I don't know if it's good, but I have I have a topic. I don't know bananas because that's mine. Okay, <laughs> well, I have a topic that I think is also interesting. I think I also wanted to touch on a little bit, like Amar and 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 how he comes across in the documentary. Yeah, because obviously we know him really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know i know he, he might come like because i've seen comments of people saying that oh he's toxic and stuff and actually he isn't i mean he's he's like In these he, moments there was it was quite the opposite yeah yeah he's like he's like very very genuine and authentic of course he has no filter and maybe that's some to a fault at times and i mean he's young you know how was i when i was 16. yeah i don't even want to remember actually uh, how were you how were you we don't know and i mean it's not only about being 16 it's like being being 16 in this high pressure, intense environment, yeah. when this is what you care the most about, like he is so passionate about Dora and about everything that you know his team and his teammates and stuff. So he cares so much to the point where obviously he can't control anything. Like he's completely like, you know, like emotionally completely overwhelmed. Um, and it's first land for him, first major, first in, you know in front of a crowd, everybody's looking at him. He he's very competitive, so he puts a lot of pressure on his shoulders. And it's this level of care that kind of speaks out. It's yeah. Like, I don't want to lose. I want us to pick Viper. I, I just not do shit, you know. And then he puts his like his head between his hands. Like, it's just the emotions, right? And it, it there's no bad intention. None of that actually. It's uh, quite the opposite. Like he has all he has the best intentions at heart, and yeah. that's how how he thinks it should be conveyed in that moment. Um, but you learn, you know, like he's going to learn and, and that was a learning experience for him. And he also changed throughout the tournament. But what I do want to say is like, he's the kind of person that he's very kind hearted anyways. Like he's, he's really 
he's, he wants the best for his teammates also. And sometimes he thinks that the best is to tell them, I don't think you're good on Warlock. And he really believes so. You know, he's like, why don't you like, just play that hero? You're better. Uh, and yeah, sometimes he doesn't really realize what it implies, right? It's like, well, this could hurt my confidence if you tell me that. And he doesn't have the distance he has to, to see these things. That's also why I always took it with a smile is because I knew that he was not trying to hurt me or, or fled. quite the opposite, really. So I think it's worth mentioning that Bastion can also be that. And there's a lot of good to take from that. I think he was a driving force in that. <clears throat> you know, he brought each. that level of energy every day, that level of care every day. So if anybody, and there were days where I did not have it as much, right? Yeah. But he was bringing it. And of course he had a, he had a special way to bring it. And sometimes we had to kind of control that like, yo bro, you know, not cool. Or like tone it down a little bit, but you know, I also want to give him a shout out for being, for caring as much as he cares and doing as much as he does. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we're preparing games, uh, between series, we go back to the hotel. It's like 11 PM We're we're fried, we're, we're hungry, we're tired. And there's a game at 9 a.m. the next day and we have to start prepping on that team. Misha and Shu were abroad and they were doing so much work um, with us. So they had a lot prepared. And then we would sit down and it would be Amar. It would be Amar and me and Johan with Misha and Shu online staying up until 1.30, 2 a.m., like three, four hours of like discussing strategies, drafting against each other, getting ready for the next day. And, you know, that's like an immense level of care. And Johan has always been like that. I've always been like that. We haven't met a lot of people that had the same, you know, mm. drive. But he does, maybe even more at times, honestly. Like, and of course, that's something that's hard to control sometimes. Yeah. Plus, he has a really dark, like, I have, the way I found it is like a really dark humor. I think he's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, he is uh, so funny. No, he made so me fun. crack up so many times with the shit he said there. It was, it was, it was good. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, it's a way when he says, like, oh, stop saying useless stuff. Yeah. 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 This, you this know, makes me laugh. This makes yeah. me laugh so much. But at the same time, he would be the one, he came to me in the tournament at some point. And he's like, are we going to have the useless speech or not? So yeah, he, has, yeah, he knows. He knows it's important, yeah. and I think he's also helping the other guys go get through the the shyness. Maybe you know, like, well, guys, this is strange. We don't like this, but let's have it. You know, mm -hmm. but since he's calling it the useless speech, it's fine for everybody to sit down, gather. Yeah, have, it's a useless speech. We're just like we're we're above it, but let's have it anyways. It's kind yeah, of fun, you know. Yeah. But because deep down they do want it, and the fact that he also goes for it this way and uses these words it helps the other be like yeah it's cringe bro but let's have a little bit of fun let's have it you know yeah the grandpa wants to talk so let's hear him out <laughs> it's 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 kind of cool you know like in a way of course uh, he has yeah. to be kept in check i'm not, I'm not feeling pretty pre-made today so i'm not feeling pre -made. <laughs> i only want to fuck enemies <laughs> no, he, he always pushes you back. yeah yeah you know? and and never admit the softness you know? but there was a relationship built up you know, in that tournament with me specifically you were like like I'm kind of poking him and he's poking me back and, 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 and it worked out. We, we found, we found our ways, uh, we found our way during the tournament. And that's also because he opened up, you know, he, he could have been stayed really close and, and he didn't really, he really opened up. And I think he tried really hard to also learn and adapt. Which is huge emphasis on his age, he's 16. Yeah. And, he came, tournament. That, and that was his first like serious team, you know, like professional environment with, you know, he, he comes from playing with friends and shouting at each other's and. And that's it, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. No, I mean, you mentioned Misha and True. I think yeah, special shout out also to. I mean, I really wish they could have gotten to experience it because it was also something that I think they had worked so hard for. I mean, they had an amazing online season, and all that. I was say all that work. Uh, I'm happy it didn't go to waste because uh, the fruit was also you know the major win. Um, it's not like Seb came in and taught them Dota. No, they had a whole system going that. Uh, I mean, we came in and also, I guess it's similar to what we were doing in the past too. Like it's a good and healthy system. It's not like we we just got a new team and had nothing to do with it. But Misha has been carrying this torch uh, that we've been, I mean, and trying to do the things in a good way, similar way to, to what we've been doing. So, you know, shout out to them for, uh, it's also their major win. I'm sad they didn't sure. you know, get to be there. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, there, were, there were many moments in the tournament where we had no answers how we should adapt and they had the answers always oh my god I always felt that we could go to them and like guys like we're confused right now or we're not really sure and they would be like oh, man it's really clear yeah. it's this 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 and that do you remember the storm thing at the the storm call with Misha and the oh. finals oh like where yeah. BZM was like why don't we just pick storm and it's like Misha yeah I know we can pick storm but my mid laner is a pussy so like, <laughs> Misha said that yeah right? Misha is like yeah I know I know for a long time we can, yeah. but you know he doesn't want to play it yeah. <laughs> it's too BZM like my mid laner <laughs> he's talking to it <laughs> 
It'd be simple asking, why do we pick Storm? Uh, if you're like, ah, no, but he, I'm meddling. <laughs> yeah, he has a good way. He has a great way of that. So, BZM is the, what, what struck me during the tournament was like, he's the kind of guy that, so he had these moments where when he was disappointed with himself or upset because we just lost, he yeah. would go into this um, inner, his inner self, like he would, you know, stop isolated. Uh, yeah. Like he would like kind of start focusing and you could feel like the, the energy or the fire like building up and then he would just unleash like when the game came. I was really impressed with that. Some people are like that and then he's just smashing them, you know? So after we just lost sometimes, you know, everybody's different. Like, you know, Tommy is like, we, t we speak, we, we, we kind of hug, we, you know, we, we make sure we're there for each other and stuff. BCM, I would go to him a little bit, check a bit, because I'm also, I, I got to know them, right? Better, yeah. like individually. And he's like, I'm, I'm getting nothing back. He's like, he's making you feel like, bro, peace, like get away from me. No, no. Uh, because he had to kind of, yeah, it's funny. You know, the, for me, the example is like, you know when somebody hits the space bar like in a frustrated moment it has a different ring to it when this frustration something bad is coming out of it or if he's like this for, for me like bzm this frustration was all pointed towards the right things it was like yeah, pointed, yeah, the enemy yeah yeah, yeah. he's like yeah. he's sending a space bar like this because yeah. he lost like he had a bad lane or something and you just know next game he's like he's really mad yeah that's not way to put it like he's yeah. really directing that towards the right it's not the team thing. yeah yeah no, no. Me, i can hear it almost on how the space bar sounds like, yeah. is it going into you here or is it going into their face no it's there, it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's a powerful thing honestly and you kind of and i think that also adds confidence to the team when you have this kind of profile where you feel like <laughs> oh boy like this map too you know good luck good luck dealing with him because he's he's very upset you know? and he's the kind of person like it's kind of cool yeah also the bzm moment when seb is saying like you i've spent you know 11 years uh, or 12 years and i spent most of them losing you can do the same or you guys can listen now maybe we can cut that short a bit you know and then bcm is like guys <laughs> i think we should listen <laughs> that was the talk in the hotel room after the fanatic game that's part of what i told them yeah yeah because i remember there was they were watching like some streams and streams and stuff and they're, i'm like you're watching streams of players that never won a tournament and Johan and I are sitting here in the room. You're not gonna listen to us? Like, do you like? Does it make any sense to you? Like, have you thought about what you're doing? I was really like, I was so upset. I I feel bad now. I feel bad. Uh, but then yeah, BZM was the first one to say, yeah, guys, like, I don't want to waste time. You know, yeah. so let yeah. let's do this. You know, let's do this the right way. Like, I don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste twelve years. He's like, this guy is like a failure or something. He spent that ten years before he won. I want to win tomorrow. So uh, that was cool. That was super cool. Oh, it was really nice to have the opportunity to work with the you know younger motivated people like Tommy is definitely like a more mature uh I guess player or or teammate to also have like very few things I feel like you have to kind of uh make sure Tom Tommy just takes care of himself he's always good like very stable yeah, yeah. he's and, so important and Artem and BZM to me like they they're super uh curious open minded I mean for me I mean we haven't really mentioned Yuragi um to me, he reminds me the most of like some of these top carry players like Fear, uh, like myself or like Matumba Man, that are players that really adapt to the team and play for the team. But more than that, they also know, you know, themselves how to play their the broken stuff and whatever. To me, like yeah, maybe it's also to do with all their ages. Uh, they have so much room to grow, and they don't. I don't even know if they realize. Uh, but here, the shift that they all did, uh, I, all the stuff that they took in. I don't know if I'd ever expected to be in this position myself, like to also see it, but I'm also kind of envious, you know, that I, I didn't, I didn't have this chance. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just thinking, like, wow, it was uh, quite an experience to to have also have had for them. It's, um, I mean, you mentioned Tommy and 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 Yuragi, like space in particular. I think these, the people that are, that don't take as much space because they understand that they. They have a different role within the team. Mm. I think it's amazing. Like I'm always like I know that that's something that's sometimes harder for me, because um, the one that takes space, it might be. I think it's I think it's harder to do things without being in the spotlight in a way sometimes because it's yeah. it's kind of ungrateful, right? Like, uh, and I'm always like impressed and honestly like in admiration of these 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 characters. And that's like Tommy. Tommy adapted so much also to how I played. I was like all over the place with my support plays. Like I'm not a support player, so I would do things wrong, forget to buy wards, and he's just like quietly making up for my shit. You know, like honestly, that's what he's doing, and he's doing it so well. And and he's not even like letting me feel 
that he's doing that, you know? Honestly, like, how selfless, how talented, how smart, how, you know, you name it. And 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 so oh my god, you were griefing so much in the beginning. Of Steph. course, I was griefing. I do, so much. I do. But Tommy, like, oh my, he was god. giving me the smiles. <laughs> yeah. he, was, he was telling me how great I was doing and stuff. Like honestly, like, what kind of person is that? Like I think it's it's absolutely amazing, and and I, I I'm really thankful for for how he behaved and who he is as a person. Uh, and same for for space. I mean, you, you mentioned it, Yuragi. Like he does so much of that for these people when the, when the speech is happening, let's say, and the, kind of the, the strong-headed persons are kind of banging heads because they they don't know what to do anything else. Like they're just yeah. these kind of people. Uh, then you have the smart smarter ones that are sitting in the back, analyzing, understanding, uh, planning how they're gonna behave next, how they're gonna fit into that, how they're gonna help this happen. And props to these profiles, honestly, especially in a competitive environment because they're the um, they're the secret heroes. But I think they're the true heroes in a way. Uh, so you know, big props to to Tommy and, and and Space for that. Honestly, they were, yeah, they were amazing. Oh, what a group! Yeah, that was a cool. It was what a cool major. It was a really cool major. I'm, I'm happy I got taken back too. Yeah. yeah, that was the first time I saw it yesterday. I got the full live experience. It was it was really nice. I, I'm afraid I was like laughing way more than everyone else because Seb Seb scenes are just they hit me different. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, does anyone have anything else on their heart, on their mind? Maybe somebody has a good question to shoot. All right. Um, I got a fan favorite, favorite question, probably from the YouTube section. Uh, if those lines. When are we okay. getting Jerax yeah. on the podcast? Or, or Puppy? Or Puppy. Or Puppy. I mean, Jerax or Puppy. I mean, I would love to have both on the podcast for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, we'll, we should have uh, uh, have a quick ask, see where they're at, and, and if they'll get time. I. I I think the last time I spoke to Yesu was last TI. Yeah. Um, when he was coaching, uh, was it Liquid, right? Liquid, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I um, I heard he, or I read on Twitter, he was just doing this uh, like individual coaching. Uh, he offered to, I mean, anyone could reach out to him and like, yo, I want help and stuff. No gameplay though, that's what he said. He was not going to help you with gameplay, but yeah, I wonder if he's going to go into a more psychology route or, or yeah. I, I, I'm sure Yesu too, like, Seb, Seb and me as well, we always had really high regard for people who could teach us things about competition and ourselves and how to become a better version of ourselves to achieve what we want to achieve. Um, I think without some of these people in our lives, we, I think they gave us more than 20%. I think they gave us like a lot like for, for those that wanted to listen. Greg Wells was somebody we met in 2017. Uh, the lecture he gave us was incredible. Um, it's also a lot about the self-performance and the health and food. And then of course, Mia, Mia Stilberg, like, I, I can only imagine, uh, how, how things could have been for TN9 without her. I think she really had a big part also. I mean, I've spoken about this before, but yeah, like mentally TN9, we were all really done. And if it wasn't for seven, I think Mia too, it, uh, yeah. I think this stuff is is ultimately really important. I wonder where Yes is at uh, if he's planning to do something a la, you know, down this route. You know, that's not a major. I don't know if you remember this, but in one of the interviews we didn't include it in the film. But in one of the short pieces we interviewed you, you when you arrived into the major, you went, "Oh, I'm just here to learn off Mia." This is one of my yeah. focuses of this event. Yeah, I want to learn off her. I want to I want to, I want to sponge in all of her knowledge. Yeah, that was your goal for that event. Obviously, things changed once you start <laughs> doing quite well. But yeah. No, but I mean, for me, I, I I also hope to see myself one day doing something similar. I, I keep imagining uh, trying to do the same things that she also did for us. Seems simple and seems even useless to some, but if you know what you're looking at, I think it's it's not. The more simple it seems, it means that the better it's done. Like, th that's how I view it. Like, when somebody makes something feel really simple and straightforward, it means and that they know what they're the talking about. What they're, yeah. yeah, they know what they're talking yeah. about. If somebody says it's complicated, hard to explain, I mean, bro, yeah. <laughs> you don't away. know yet. Get away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, for sure. And if uh, Clement, you uh, you ever interested, you are also more than welcome. Um, yeah, that would be nice. That'd, that'd be yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, final question, I guess. Uh, how many bananas do you think you ate in your life? Quick math. Um, I did, I did the count the other day. I think seven, seven your whole life. <laughs> no, I don't know uh, a lot. I mean, I don't know if it turns up for for Dota events and for boot camps, but I don't know why. For some reason, it so I have twelve a day. The tournament was eleven days. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Start doing the math that way. I have this belief that it it kind of helps with the 
with the focus. I don't know why. Maybe Dora just burns all your potassium away, and you're like, you have to Maybe. restock. I would like to know the the <laughs> medical. You know, like the. Uh, there's something there. You guys are making fun of me, but maybe some doctor. Should... Maybe Dora just brings us back to monkey. If you're like a banana expert, like a doctor, just speak up, please. Like, help me out. I'm sure it's helping. It's helping, guys. It's a secret. It's the secret. Half of the locker room speeches in that film, you've got a pill in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> Waving it. At... <laughs> Why not? I think I've also eaten so many bananas with my Dora games. It's it's the monkey like hand in hand, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Like, for a reason. Like, it's all. <laughs> It's all related. It's yeah. all connected. Yeah. There we go. Well, there you have it. Um, thank you, guys. And thank you, Tom, and, and, and everyone who, uh, yeah, made this come together. Um, big shout out to Red Bull. Big shout out to, um, yeah, Tom, the team, Yusef. Um, less to you, of course, now. It's okay. But, uh, yeah, incredible stuff. I'm, I mean, I'm proud, but also just thrilled to have, have gotten to witness it. Uh, Again, I'm very biased. Like, I loved what I saw yesterday. Uh, I hope everybody loved it just half as much as me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and also, I, I want to thank you particularly, like, to you and, 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 and the team and, and Red Bull, of course, and everybody at OG that helped this happen because I know these pieces, they age like fine wine, you know, they really yeah. do. Uh, I yeah. think we're looking back at the true sides now mm -hmm. and, and we're so grateful that they're there. And because at the end of the day, memories, they do fade in a way yeah uh, it's like feelings a little bit like some of the stuff just fades away but this is like a way to kind of set them in stone and and yeah and it's amazing so if it i know that if it was good yesterday and it's good today it's going to be even better like a year from now and five years from now so yeah very grateful for that no thank you guys i mean it's the og family eh? i feel like i'm part of the furniture now so of course uh, yeah of course. <laughs> but it's all good no I, I hope everyone who watched it uh, uh gets a, gets a piece of what we felt at that tournament so, yeah i'm sure they will yeah well, we'll be back in the future with uh, Seb's uh, return part two. <laughs> one last ride. One, one last, last, last ride. Thank you, everyone.